16. Barring Jane armed. T minus 10. Nine. On August 8, 2007, Space Shuttle Endeavour launched STS-118 to the International Space Station to deliver and eventually assemble the starboard S-5 truss segment, as well as an external stowage platform and replacement control moment gyroscope. The mission was also the final flight to include the SpaceHab Logistics Single Module. the flight of Endeavour, the Space Shuttle begins its journey back into orbit. Endeavour rolling onto the proper alignment, heads down, brings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Taking aim on the International Space Station for back in on Friday. 30 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines will soon throttle back to 72% of rated performance in the pocket to reduce the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Long-range trackers, now from a camera on the external fuel tank showing the bird's eye view of Endeavour heading towards space. 54 seconds into the flight, Endeavour already eight miles downrange, standing by for the throttle up call from Capcom, Chris Ferguson. Endeavour, go with throttle up. Go with throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Scott Kelly, joined on the flight deck by pilot Charlie Hobaugh, flight engineer Rick Mastracchio and Tracy Caldwell, Dave Williams, Al Drew and Barbara Morgan seated down on the mid deck, Morgan racing towards space on the wings of a legacy. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight, Endeavour currently traveling almost 2,000 miles an hour, 14 miles in altitude, 15 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good fuel cells, three good auxiliary power units, three good main engines. Endeavour flying straight as an arrow, one minute, 55 seconds into the flight, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation, guidance now converging. Endeavour's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel, aiming Endeavour for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Endeavour with a kick in the pants for the next minute and a half, assisting the shuttle and its crew on its climb to orbit. During the standard two-day rendezvous orbit, the crew checked the shuttle with the orbital boom sensor system, and Endeavour was given a clean bill of health. On August 10, 2007, Endeavour approached the station, performed its inspection flip, and docked to the station without incident. Yeah, because of... Uh the damage to uh, Columbia, we now uh, do this rendezvous pitch maneuver, which uh, allows the, uh, actually the autopilot is flying the vehicle, but we go through this uh, 360 degree pitch um, to take pictures of the bottom of the space shuttle from the International Space Station. The crew members are snapping a lot of photos here, and that's to uh, just document how the, uh, the bottom of the vehicle looks. Here's uh, a picture of Endeavour as we approach the International Space Station. Uh, at this point, I would be manually flying Endeavour and trying to bring the two vehicles very, uh, uh, bringing together like we see here, although this is, again, sped up. Didn't really actually dock this fast. Probably would have, probably would have broke something. We have capture. Not we have capture. Not capture. Not Not we have free, yeah. free drift. With us uh, together, finally, the next thing is to seal the hatches between the two vehicles so we've got an airtight seal. Uh, and this is us working that right now. Once that's done, it's time to go aboard the space station and, and begin working. Uh, it's kind of like a debut night on any movie in, in Hollywood where the paparazzi await. Uh, I believe at this point there are probably more cameras than there are astronauts aboard the space station out available at this time. And here are us greeting the crew and, and comparing our, our photographic equipment. <laughs>
after uh, after we we said our uh, our hellos, it was time to kind of get ready to do the uh, rest of the day's work, getting ready for the uh, next day's spacewalk, and also uh, Tracy and uh, and Scorch here, Charlie Hobart, were getting ready to uh, hand off S5 to start the next day's activities. See that here in the video. Um, the shuttle arm is grappled to the S5 truss and handing it over to the space station arm for installation on the next day with the EVA crew members out board. And there you saw a picture of uh, Charlie at the workstation, the robotic workstation, as uh, he maneuvered the uh, truss element to uh, its position. On Saturday, August 11th, 2007, flight day four, Rick Mastriaccio and Dave Williams started the first EVA of the mission, installing the S-5 truss to the station, increasing the total mass of the ISS to 232,000 kilograms. The EVA duration was 6 hours and 17 minutes, and all objectives were successfully completed. And it was uh, pretty amazing actually watching S5 finally get attached to the station, realizing that we're expanding the uh, station in length. Of course, meanwhile inside, we had lots of transferred about 5,000 pounds of cargo to bring aboard the space station and 4,000 pounds to bring back down to Earth, as well as a bunch of repairs on this old station. And there's a scorch down there replacing one of the scratch panes on the window. On Monday, August 13th, Rick Mastriaccio and Dave Williams completed the mission's second spacewalk where they removed the new control moment gyro from Endeavour's payload bay and moved it to the Z1 truss, where they removed the failed CMG. After installing the new CMG, they replaced the failed CMG in the external stowage platform, where it remained until it was returned to Earth on mission STS-122. After initial testing on the ground, NASA reported the new CMG was functioning normally. On August 15th, Rick Mastriasho and Clayton Anderson began the third EVA of the mission. During the EVA, they successfully relocated the CETA cart, retrieved the P-6 transponder, relocated the S-band antenna from P-6 to P-1, and installed a new S-band baseband signal processor and transponder on the P-1 truss. During a routine glove inspection, Mastriasho noticed that a possible tear in the thumb of his left glove, and to be safe, NASA managers decided to end the spacewalk and examine and photograph the glove during suit removal. The spacewalk accomplished all but one of its tasks. NASA managers decided overnight to shorten the fourth EVA by two hours as a precaution due to Hurricane Dean's continued path into the Gulf of Mexico. The EVA duration was 5 hours and 2 minutes, with a total EVA time of 23 hours and 15 minutes for the mission. The EVA accomplished three primary objectives, and one get-ahead task. Two tasks were deferred, plans to tie down debris shield in the Destiny Lab and relocation of a toolbox. During the spacewalk, Williams and Anderson got a good look at Hurricane Dean, and both were awed by the sight. Transfer activities were completed ahead of schedule, and both crews worked hard to get everything transferred back to Endeavour after the spacewalk. On August 18th, the crew performed a short farewell ceremony, followed by hatch closure, and the next day, August 19th, Endeavour undocked from the station. Undocking is a, a pretty fun event for me. It's the, uh, the one flying task I get to actually execute. If anyone would like the landing, that wasn't done by the pilots, done by the commander. They're, I guess Bob Crippen and, and John Young back in the day didn't want to have a guy named a co-pilot, so they call him commander and pilot instead of pilot co-pilot, but I'm really the co-pilot. So Scott flies the docking, I get to fly the undocking, and this is a space station as we're separating away, and then of course uh, Scott will do the uh, landing. Uh, for our flight, uh, again, it was it was pretty busy on undocking day. You basically wake up in the morning, get ready to punch off when the lighting is, is correct. You get everybody in position. You got seven people cluttered on the flight deck. Everybody wants to take pictures, get a piece of the action, and somebody in there is supposed to actually safely separate from the station. That's supposed to be me. Um, it was really a it was really a pleasant event. My first flight, I got to do a full fly around. We actually shot a 3D IMAX video for this one. We just separated out. Uh, directly ahead of the station and then did what's called a separation burn where we just uh, 
to about a three foot per second acceleration to get away from the station. And after we did that, you're pretty much in a safe trajectory. And we really took a, a, a long time to take a bunch of great pictures of the station. On August 21st, Endeavour returned to the Kennedy Space Center, landing at runway 15. Three, two, one, easy left turn on the hack. Light winds all the way around. And here's a, here's a view of, uh, from the ground on the shuttle as we fly around the heading alignment cone. You can hear some of our co cockpit audio, so we can talk a whole lot. Good, good. 3,000 speed brakes going closed. Looks like about seven. Okay. 2,000 pre-flare. The pre-flare, arm the gear. Gears arm, got a light. 1,307 max. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, we're three, four hundred feet. Here's on the way. Shuttle's a big light. Good energy through point. the threshold. You're on the ball bar. Good job. 5240, 4235, 3230. Let it keep coming. 2225, 10220. Good luck, correction. Your touch. We had uh, some crosswinds to contend with during this landing that was, uh, you can see in the video. All right, good. It was so smooth, we, only one All of right, us could actually job. feel the wheels touch down. Congratulations, welcome home. You've been given a new meaning to higher education. <laughs> On September 19, 2007, Progress M60, which had been docked to the Svesta aft port, undocked from the station, deorbited and burnt up in the atmosphere. On September 27th, 2007, Soyuz TMA-10 undocked from the Navy report of Zarya and moved to redock to the aft port of Svesda. The next flight to the station would begin Expedition 16. 